biggest challenges you'll ever find in swapping D85 is the availability of it. Sometimes there just is no availability of the 85 in your area. And while E85 is becoming more widespread, there's still not enough in every location in every area to actually make it something that you can use on a daily basis. I've been able to manage to use this E85 on the 97 and this 98 Cobra for about six years. And I've been using ethanol only for almost two years straight. Now, the way I've been able to do that is I go back and forth. I have a multitude of gas cans that I take with me. And, well, shit, you get yourself a bunch of E85 because, well, what else are you going to do? I keep it, store some here in a safe location in the area that I'm going to be in the most. And every now and then I bring an extra gas can with me if I'm going to go on a long road trip. I've been able to get Check ethanol anywhere between road. Louisiana and Dead Texas Red just ahead. about. Um, southeast Louisiana has definitely got a shortage of E85, and that's something that we're trying to make a change in. Southwest Louisiana has a little bit, if you go to Baton Rouge, and of course, towards the west, there's more ethanol in Louisiana in general. So, my biggest issue and my biggest complication was trying to have a local station that's near me. Sometimes there's just no ethanol near where you're at. In the long run, it's definitely been worth it. I spent less money on the 85 than I have on gasoline, and it's made everything exactly how I want it to be when it comes to running my car, cleaning that engine out, and getting this car running and performing a lot better than it would on 93 octane, quite honestly. There's some myths surrounding E85, and those need to be broken. E85 alone has a fuel, even without a tune that takes advantage of the benefits such as increased spark timing, etc., will gain you a little bit of horsepower. Ethanol has a better capability of producing horsepower because of its chemical properties, and of course, because ethanol has less energy in it per se, you have to run more of it to actually reach snowing. And on average, that could be anywhere, depending on the vehicle, from 10 to 35 percent more. It could vary based on if you're boosted, naturally aspirated, cruise, wide open throttle, all those things make a difference. One of the things that gains you power out of the ethanol in general, especially in hot climates, is the fact that it runs so cool. Whenever I run my 97 Cobra in autocross, even when it was naturally aspirated, we always made sure that we ran some E85. And that E85 had the benefit in the dead of Louisiana heat of making that engine run cooler. The oil temperatures were lower. Um, and when it came down to it in the heat of battle, when I was in the car the hardest, no matter what, everything was safe. There was no risk or fear of detonation, even when I was boosted. And, and that made all the damn difference in the world. Um, here I'm running this car in a I've already posted pictures in the cylinders of it cleaning all those years of neglect and whatever else the previous owners of this car were doing um, as far as the, the modifications and things they did to this this setup which there aren't very much it's got intake plate spacers I put a fuel pump in the back um, IMRC delete and that's it but those cylinders are looking black and now the cylinders and all those valves and everything in the motor are coming clean. This engine runs a hell of a lot better than it did before I got it and programmed it myself and made all the changes.
car, gasoline wise, it was getting 25 to 26 miles to the gallon highway. Now I'm getting about 23 miles to the gallon highway. And I know, I know people cry and be like, oh, how dare you? Gas mileage to race car. Well, shit, if I'm on the road, man, I want to get some good ass gas mileage at the same time. I can whip some ass on the road too. Why not? If you can program it and you get a and you get a tune that's correct, you get a good calibration and your setup, you're gonna have power every single damn time. And that's what's most important. But if if you lose out on all your fuel economy when you don't even have to, you're playing yourself, bro. Like what are you doing? Like, you can get this fuel economy and this power. Why are you not going to demand the best from the person tuning your vehicle? Think about that mindset for a minute. Ethanol lost me a little bit of fuel economy because this is an engine that's not made for it. But ethanol has the capability of exceeding the fuel economy of gasoline because its chemical makeup and its octane rating can handle a more aggressive engine that gets more power and fuel economy, what we like to call efficiency, volumetric efficiency. Push comes to shove, E85 is my friend. There are other fuels out there that are alternatives like butanol and different things like that that are experiments that get even better economy 